Now, here's the skinny on the animations. Each animation is carefully thought out and keyed so it can blend seamlessly with the other animations within the movement. It's not unlike the motion libraries described in other tutorials. It's just automated. This is what takes time in pre-production. What can we automate and how do we do it so that the animators can use their time on other things? Walk cycles represent a lot of animation time on a character, and it's something we can program easily without extra animator assistance. We start with one animation, a walk cycle. Load up the MCP file into Compose and add it to the track. Go into Compose, to the Clips tab, right click, clip load, and we're inside the Motion folder in the High Event folder and load walkforward.mcp. There is already inside the Tracks tab a dummy track here that we can add in. Highlight the track and walk is in the pull down menu. Add that walk to the scene. I hit play. Besides an awesome looking walk cycle with plenty of weight and overlapping motion, there are a few technical things going on here. One is that every leg is moving the same distance, thanks to our equal limb lengths. Where the legs different lengths, the shorter ones would have to stretch, where the longer ones take smaller steps to get an equal distance, which may or may not look right. Two, the setup position of the foot is exactly in the middle of the cycle. This creates a neutral movement that can be adjusted in Compose. You see, when we move the keyframes from the timeline into a clip, a whole world of possibilities open up. We can amplify or reduce the motion to fit our needs without hurting it. By having a neutral style cycle, we can control the intensity of the clip and blend it without breaking the rig, because there's plenty of room for the legs to stretch around. This is just a forward clip. From here, we can pull all the other clips for this move set. During keyframing, we set a walking distance that must be carried over to the other clips within our movement to keep them in sync. Because Compose lets us adjust motion without destruction, it becomes easier to create the rest of the move set. The sidestep was created out of the forward walk by muting a few curves, then rekeying them back in. First, we need to measure the stride length, the distance that the legs move. What I did for the sideways walk was add a procedural cube in and scaled it to the length of one of the legs. So within setup, just add a cube procedural. And we'll set the Y radius down, set this cube to edges, make it narrow, and the Z radius, let's move this to the neutral position. That's going to be the start. Switch to a left view, and we'll use the edges of this as our measurement tool to create the sideways walk. So when we go into Animate, this is the center of the walk. He walks to one end. So we take this procedural, we scale the Z radius until it matches, and you'll see that as he steps forward, he hits the same distance behind. So this is our neutral walk. The default position is right inside the center, and this is our distance. So to get the sideways walk, we use this measurement tool. Let's go back into a perspective view here. Start at frame zero and just rotate this on heading and that is our sideways walk. So we've already set this up so that it sits on the neutral position so now we have the distance that it needs to walk sideways. So like I said before we can mute a few curves and then rekey them back in because everything is now sitting on a clip and we can add keyframes on top of the clip that's playing. So within Compose if you open up the clip instance down here at the bottom you have all of the feet which you can uncheck. Let's see, we can disable them so as he's walking he's not moving his feet at all. And from here we can go ahead and position oops, sorry, middle mouse click and position the legs in the right spot. And we have our stride length. And so this is how we can set up and use Compose to create more animation from other clips that already exist. So use this same measurement, move this somewhere else, position it on the other parts, key those until we have our sideways clip. Now we can go ahead and just cherry pick some of the options inside of these clips. For example, uh, which foot are we looking at here? The front right foot. If we just mute the X and Z positions, those are the only positions we need to key back in. Everything else keeps our timing as he walks and steps around. Now don't worry about this movement of this 
cube here since we were just testing the thing out. But the idea is the same. We've measured our stride length and we're using that stride length to create the other walk, which is a sideways walk. So our X and Z curves, if we just mute those, we still have the original timing from the clip and we can just key the horizontal movement. Once that is in place, the next step is just plotting the computed keys to the timeline for the entire group. To do that, make sure you are selecting an object that's within our group. Make sure the group is set and then you hit enter, check the use computed values when you create a keyframe, which will create a key on the object from the clip. And from there, you can disable this clip and have actual keys sitting on the timeline you can turn into another clip. So now that you know the order, I'm just going to start over again and show you the clip that was created. So I'm going to load up the rig again, go to Compose, right click, clip load. We're going to load Walk Forward and load Walk Left. Look at the track here. We'll add the Walk Forward track, pick High Event again, create a new track, and add Walk Left. So both of these clips were created. The walk forward clip was created first. The walk left track was created second using the walk forward clip in the way we just described. So right clicking to create multiple repeats of this clip and right click just create a crossfade here to check to make sure that they still synchronize. So it's easy to see that creating motions from the same clip will yield clips that line up and blend perfectly. Not only that, but the blended distance, when this clip fades over from walk forward to walk left, the blended distance within the clips will be about the same distance as they walk when these clips are cross-fading with each other. So that's going to keep foot sliding to a minimum when we get the whole system working later on.